What's up guys, track presets in Pro Tools were a game-changing feature, and frankly I think they're a bit of an underrated feature and not utilized by many people to their full potential. So today I'm going to show you what track presets are, how to save them, and some of the ways that I use them. Recently I did a video on blank templates and how I utilize those in my workflow, and at the end of that video I mentioned how combining my blank template along with track presets drastically improves the speed of my workflow. So at the end of this video you'll see a little bit more about what I mean and some specific examples. So before we dive into Pro Tools, I just want to address what is a track preset? Basically, a track preset saves the current configuration of a selected track or multiple tracks. And this gives you the ability to save your favorite plugin chains, your favorite effects sends, and even audio and MIDI embedded into a track. So let's dive into Pro Tools. And first, I'm going to show you how to save a track preset, which also is how you would update a track preset to keep them up to date and current with your workflow. And then how to use them and implement them into your session, either as new tracks or on on top of pre-existing tracks. All right, so the first thing we have to do is save a track preset. And there's a few different things we could do. We can save one track with the audio that's on it, or we can exclude the audio, or a MIDI track with MIDI on it, or we can save a batch of tracks. So first off, I just wanna save this click track preset. So there's a few different ways to do this. First, we can right click on one of the selected tracks or the selected track, if you're only doing one, and go to save track preset. The other way is to go to the track menu up at the top, and click save track preset. There's also a nice shortcut there because you all know I love my shortcuts. So once we click that, we're brought up to this save track preset pop-up menu. So there's a few different options we have to choose. First off is the category. In here, we can make our own categories to kind of better organize our track presets. So for me, I'm just gonna throw this into editing. Next, we get to name this track preset. So by default, it goes to the track that you clicked, but you can name it to anything. So for me, I'm gonna type audio, click because that's what I want to remember this as. I can then click down here. There's include audio and MIDI clips, which is something I want to do on this one because the audio clips on this track, which are the printed click, is something I would like to save. Next is the tag. So this is just helping for search. And we'll show you that in a minute. Um, I don't typically do anything besides the audio populated tags, but you can name them in different ways if that's something that you find helpful for your workflow. Then below that, there is the track data to recall. And if you click on that, it looks a lot like the session data import window, and it even has presets at the top to save different arrangements of these settings that you'd like. But this is just what data is it gonna pull from the track that you've now selected? What is it gonna save? So for this one, I don't need to have the plugin assignments or the sends on this track preset because there is no plugins, there's no sends on the track. It's literally just the audio. But I don't have to actually turn off all these other ones because it doesn't really matter. And then we click OK. And that's it. Now we've saved the track preset. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to actually recall our track preset. So there's a couple different ways to do this. First off, we can create a track preset the same way we'd create a new track. So we're just gonna hit the new track dialog. Instead of audio track though, we're gonna click on that and go down to track presets. Then you'll see here all of our categories. Choose the category that we want to pick our track preset out of. And then we go and select the track preset itself. So for me, I'm gonna create a new audio click track here. So then instantly it brings in all the audio and I now have a new click track in my session. The other way to recall track presets, and this is one that I really like to use with my blank session template, is using the workspace. So we can go up to window and go to workspace, new workspace, and just default. Now over on the left, you'll see there is a track presets folder over here. So if we click that, we then get search tags. Now these are where you would search for those tags that you entered or that were automatically entered for you when you created your track preset. But then down below, we see all the different categories that we had as little folders. So this is how we can organize our track presets. Even if we create them the other way into some category and then we organize them later, we can organize them here just like we would any file folder structure. So if we go into the editing category, like I had saved my track preset in before, you can see the audio click right here. It also shows you the tags right there and you can also add a comment to just remember things by. So this is my cowbell uh, click track. So once you select a track preset, then you can see all the data that was associated with it and what you can pull into your new session. So let's say for this instance, I wanna take these trigger track presets and add them into my session. What I could do is double click on the trigger track preset here and it'll add it to the bottom of my session. And it's basically the same as importing session data from a different session 
but it's just not associated to any session and you don't have to go find it. Now you'll see below, I have the trigger tracks that I created in a, a previous session before, but now they've been imported into my session below the track that I had already selected. Another way to import track presets, and you can actually select multiple track presets at once. So for instance, I want to pull in the master buses and my effects returns. So I can select both of them and then just click and drag and it'll just ask me kind of where I want to put them. And then once again, there they are all initiated in my session. So one more way to bring in track presets or a portion of track presets and implement them into your session. And this is where it really gets powerful. So for instance, these effects returns that I've just added in my session, I actually have another track preset that's saved that has these sends for each one of these returns already pre-made on it. You'll see here in my track presets, I have the AK effects sends. So I can dump this track in here and you'll see when I bring it up, it's just an audio track with the sends located here. So let's say for instance, that I wanna actually put all these sends on these couple guitar tracks tracks here. So I can select them. And then instead of copying and pasting each one of these sends over and instead what I can do is go back to my track preset uh, workspace here and I can hold shift and option. The same kind of thing if you want to affect multiple tracks and click and drag this. I can either put it right on the name of one of the selected tracks, or I can even put it on the sends of one of the selected tracks. And when I drop it there, it'll automatically add and populate all the sends just like that. Now you can see these three tracks that I had selected now have all those sends recalled onto them automatically. Now you can see how powerful that might be with a series of sends or a series of plugins on a track. If you have a vocal sound and you want to copy it to a whole bunch of different tracks to kind of get you started, instead of copying it to each one, kind of clicking and dragging it around, you can quickly save it as a track preset and then I just import it onto a whole bunch of tracks all at once really easily. And last off, two other ways that you can recall the track presets that are very specific. So if you want to recall sends or inserts, you can go to one of the insert or send slots and instead of picking a plugin, you go to recall inserts and then once again, here's your cat categories and then you pick whatever one you want. It instantly will recall that series of inserts on that track. So that's really only scratching the surface of the possibilities with track presets. There's really no limit to what you can use them for and how you can use them within your own workflow. It's really up to your imagination and how you can see them fitting into your workflow. But I hope this gave you some ideas to get you started thinking about more efficient ways to work. Now, if you're interested in other Pro Tools features and tutorials like this, I have my Pro Tools tutorials playlist. You can check out other videos just like this one, which includes my video on using a blank template to get started in Pro Tools and how that helps reset your settings a little bit. So I would highly recommend checking that video out because it really goes hand in hand with the track presets and you can see how powerful they are together. But that is it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.